hi everyone a big welcome or welcome back to my channel today i'm going to be chatting about the 10 books that i read in may and june across literary fiction translated fiction historical fiction ya poetry and classics 10 books over two months is less than i typically read this was just due to life things and reading a lot for work. What I have read though, I have enjoyed with a few exquisite standout favourites. I'm slowly working my way through a lot of stunning proofs of new releases that I've been sent from publishers across all of my favourite genres. The quality of new releases at the moment feels top tier. As always, chat to me down below about these books and books that you've been reading recently. I want to hear from all of you, so let's get into it. First up in May, I read Western Lane by Chetna Maru. This was one of my Women's Prize longlist reads. It is a coming-of-age novel about a young British Indian girl who plays squash and is coached by her father when her mother passes away. It explores the collective overcoming of grief, the closeness of sisterhood, and the immigrant experience. So I thought this had a really strong start. I liked the voice of Gopi a lot. She felt very authentic, very young and earnest. I was here for the introduction of her family dynamics, especially those with her sisters. And the sport element, I was really here for. I don't tend to love books about sport, but ever since I read Carrie Soto is Back by Taylor Jenkins Reid, bit of a different vibe, granted. There's just something about that one-on-one -on -one, really personal intense look at sport that I apparently love. Unfortunately while I did like a lot of the elements the book didn't really deliver on any particular front particularly strongly for me. The characters kind of dwindled, they didn't really have a strong emotional impact on me and the squash scenes just didn't hold my attention the way I wanted them to. So pretty good elements, but ultimately it just fell a bit flat for me, so in the end I gave it 2.5 stars. Next up I read We Are Together Because by Kerry Andrew. This is a new literary novel that came out in spring from Atlantic Books. It is a character-focused apocalypse novel following four siblings, one hot, long, lethargic summer in France when inexplicable, eerie things begin to occur, including a strong, buzzing undercurrent noise that only Connor, who wears a hearing aid, can hear. This book is delicious. It is exactly what I hoped for. The vibes in here are sexy and sultry and oppressive. The prose shimmers throughout, bringing to life the landscapes, the food, the tense, sticky character dynamics and relationships. It has that distinctive apocalypse feel to the novel, before anything even happens. I loved the slow build in here. It never becomes particularly not slow or plot focused. And I really liked that hazy, somewhat unresolved feel to the whole thing. The characters in here are also brilliant. We follow each of the four characters' perspectives, ranging in age from preteen to university age. They each felt incredibly well realised their voices really distinct and complicated as they battled with issues of fragmented family, sexual awakening, abusive relationships and gender identity. And these things remain consistent struggles throughout. There is so much tension and pulling away and coming back together in here. Everything is constantly shifting. This is honestly just so good. 
a perfect summer read. I think this one is going to have a really long lasting impression on me. So in the end, I gave it five stars. Next up, I read Ambush at Still Lake by Caroline Bird. This is a new poetry collection that just came out on the 27th of June from Carcanet. It explores the ambush of real life that occurs in the stillness after the happy ending, including themes of marriage, lesbian parenthood, addiction, and recovery. I love this premise for a poetry collection. It immediately intrigued me, as did the title. So good. I think we can all relate to that feeling in life of an ambush at a still lake. This feeling was captured really well in the collection as a whole. There's a lot of strange, jarring, almost repellent imagery throughout. I found a lot of the descriptions throughout to be incredibly vivid, which I really enjoyed. It was this overall impression of the collection that I enjoyed the most, rather than any particular poems or moments. I didn't really find myself to be connecting with any poems over other poems, and I don't know that any really hit me in a way that's going to have a lasting impression on me. That being said, this was a really solid collection, and I definitely enjoyed the reading experience, so in the end, I gave it three stars. Next up, I read if My Words Had Wings by Danielle Jawondo. This is a new YA novel that just came out in May from Simon & Schuster Children's, set in Manchester in the north of England, where I live. This novel tells the story of 15-year-old Tyrese as he is released from a two-year stay in juvenile prison for armed robbery. Inspired by a visit from a black poet while inside, Tyrese sets out to forge a positive new life for himself with family and friends and find his voice. This was phenomenal. So, so strong. Hands down, the best YA novel I have read in a long time. Danielle Jawondo writes Northern Youth specifically Mancunian youths, so well. Tyrese's voice is basically perfection in here. I felt like I truly got to know Tyrese throughout this book. I connected with him, I rooted for him, I felt with him. The themes in here of systemic racism, joint enterprise and spoken word poetry come across so strongly and work so beautifully together. The role that poetry and words play in this story is so beautiful and affecting. It has also inspired an extended reading list of black poets that I now need to go and read. This book is raw and painful and hopeful and so easy to read in the best way. Danielle Jawondo is criminally underrated, one of the best YA voices of our time. If you read YA at all, you need to read this. Obviously, it's a five stars. Next up, I read Clean by Aaliyah Trabuco Zaran, translated by Sophie Hughes. This is a new Chilean literary translated novel that came out at the beginning of June from Fourth Estate, told from a locked room. Estella, the maid of a wealthy middle-class family, tells us about her employment and the events that led up to the young girl in her care being dead. I liked a lot about this. Translated South American novels that are dark and twisty and disturbing are some of my favourite things to read. It is a niche that I am very, very into. Set against the backdrop of Chile's changing political landscape, this explores themes of domestic work, class and violence. The vibes in here are exactly as you would expect. I really liked the setup in here, the unreliable narrative voice telling us the story after the fact made everything feel so precarious. That being said, I didn't love the characters too much themselves. None of them particularly grabbed my attention. They all felt quite stereotypical 
and not necessarily in the most interesting ways. This is pretty solid overall, but not a favorite of mine. So in the end, I gave it three stars. Next up, I read Enter Ghost by Isabella Hamad. This was another women's prize long-listed and shortlisted novel. It follows our female protagonist, Sonia, who after the breakdown of a love affair returns to her homeland Palestine where she reconnects with family and joins a production of Hamlet in the West Bank. There is a lot of buzz surrounding this book at the moment and I can definitely see why. Exploring themes of diaspora, displacement and artistry, this is bold and passionate and really affecting. It feels extremely literary, it's very considered and well placed, leaving a really strong impression of this place and the different dynamics at play. Sonia's journey is really interesting. This daunting and thrilling journey of finding a new self in her ancestral home amidst all of these complicated and fragile feelings that she has surrounding Palestine. Ultimately, this didn't really blow me away like I wanted it to, despite all of the strong elements. It's actually quite difficult for me to put my finger on what exactly was missing here, but it was a very beautiful read in many ways and very haunting, especially at the moment. So in the end, I gave this one 3.5 stars. Next up, I read The Mayor of Casterbridge by Thomas Hardy. This is a Victorian classic set in a Dorsetshire town, telling the story of Michael Henshard, who, in a fit of drunken rage, sells his wife and baby daughter for five guineas at a county fair. Over the years, he establishes himself as a respected and prosperous pillar of the community. His shameful secret and destructive personality laying beneath the surface. When one day his wife and child come back into his life, and drama ensues. I love Thomas Hardy. I just find his novels to be so readable and enjoyable. Some Victorian authors are easier to read and follow for me than others, and Thomas Hardy is one of those whose prose just makes sense to me. This was a delightful, dramatic, entertaining story that I got totally swept up in. We have romance, and tragedy and small town drama. I really enjoyed the characters and the voices in here a lot. Heroic but deeply flawed Michael is presented brilliantly with real grace and understanding. The dynamics between him and the various side characters are really interesting and entertaining. This was just a good time. Not my favourite Thomas Hardy novel. That spot is still safely reserved for Far From The Madding Crowd, but I really enjoyed this. I will continue to read through all of his work. And in the end, I gave this one four stars. Next up, I read Heart Be At Peace by Donal Ryan. This is a new literary novel coming out on the 15th of August from Doubleday. Set in a rural town in Ireland post-economic collapse, this book is told through 21 distinct voices as the locals look toward the future with the threat of the peace shattering never too far away. This is actually a companion novel to Donal Ryan's earlier work, The Spinning Heart, but it can be read completely separately. So this was one of my most anticipated releases of the whole year. I am a massive Donal Ryan fan. I stand by him being one of the best, most beautiful, most perceptive and tender writers we have today. And this did not disappoint in any way. I am just in awe of how he's able to keep delivering the most stunning prose and generous insights over and over and over again. One of my favourite quotes about Donal Ryan comes from Rachel Joyce and she says, I think you must really have to love people to write like this 
and I can't say it any better than that. There is so much feeling and genuine understanding of human beliefs and feelings and hopes and struggles and complications in here. Everything is quiet and essentially mundane, but it couldn't feel more real and ultimately more beautiful and affecting. I don't know if there's anything more I can say <laughs> to convey what this novel is. His writing is truly just something you have to experience for yourself. Go and live it. Of course, I gave this one five stars. Next up in June, I read The Heart in Winter by Kevin Barry. This is another new historical literary novel. This one came out on the 6th of June from Canongate. Set in 1980s Montana, this is a love story following a young poet and degenerate named Tom when Polly, the wife of a devout mine captain, comes to town. I first read Kevin Barry's work a few years ago when The Night Boat to Tangier was on the book a long list and I found his writing to be totally evocative and really delicious. I was hoping for similar vibes here and he definitely delivered. He just writes morally ambiguous characters in beautiful, captivating settings so well. Apparently he's been working on this novel for like 10 years and you can certainly feel the care and intention that's gone into it. The vibes in here are pretty epic and romantic even though it is quite a short book. It's so rich in detail and intensity exactly as you would hope from a western love story. I can't say that I fully fell in love with the story and the characters themselves. Somehow it felt like I was watching the most awesome film play out, but it was happening over there and I was over here. Does that make any sense? Overall, this was really good, incredibly accomplished, with a lot to admire. So in the end, I gave it four stars. And finally, for today, we have Listen to the Golden Boomerang Return by C.A. Conrad. This is a new poetry collection that came out recently from Penguin, centered on the somatic ritual a celebrated practice that draws on nature and crystals and meditation. The collection is an ode to survival in a world that humanity has poisoned and it encourages readers to fall back in love with the world again. This is very lyrical, almost song-like poetry and I found it to be really unique. The poems are formatted in these flowy, twisty shapes that almost move on the page. And that feels really reflective of the poetry content as well. Reading these poems felt almost trance-like to me. Individual poems didn't really stand out to me. It was more just this overall feeling of being in this collection. The idea of the here and now is really present throughout. Themes of connection, of animals, of creativity, come through really strongly and it all feels really harmonious. Not my favourite poetry collection ever, but a really beautiful reading experience that I enjoyed. So in the end, I gave this one 3.5 stars. There we have it guys, those were all of the books that I read in May and June. A pretty good couple of reading months for me and the books that were the best were so so good. Thank you so much for watching as always. I hope you enjoyed hearing about these books. I hope you want to pick some of them up. Please let me know what you've been reading recently. Tell me the best down below in the comments. Looking forward to chatting as always and I will hopefully see you really soon in another video. Bye everyone.